Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to install Windows 11 on older hardware that does not support Windows 11. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we can take a look at how to install Windows 11 on older hardware that does not support Windows 11. So, to show you what I mean, let's take a look at this particular device. So this is an older Dell machine. Um, it's about, I guess, it's about five or six years old, maybe slightly more. So if we go into Windows Update, it does say that uh, there's things available. So there is still quality updates and all that kind of stuff. But as we can see in this section here, it says this PC does not currently meet the minimum system requirements to run Windows 11. So you can, if you want to, you can use the PC health check. If you're on a relatively up-to-date version of Windows, you'll probably have that installed already. So if you go down to the start bar, actually you can see I've already checked it earlier. So PC health check, or just type in PC and health, it will start coming up and it'll tell you about your system. So this is the Dell uh, M3800, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD. Um, it's saying there, two years old. It's a little bit older than that, I believe. But yeah, it doesn't support it because of the processor. So in order to install it, uh, yeah, it basically it won't do it. So that it is not supported. You can click on check now. And yeah, you see there is the warning. This PC currently does not meet the Windows system requirements. So TPM 2.0 uh, isn't supported and the processor itself isn't currently supported. Now there is a way around this. Uh, we did a video actually a long time ago, which you can check out up here or in the video description. So if you want to, you can just edit some files actually on the ISO or actually in the registry to allow you to do the installation. But what we're gonna to do today is a more simplified version of this. So this is gonna involve downloading a piece of software called Rufus, which we'll be showing you how to do. Also how to install the Windows 11 installation ISO or disk image, and then how to actually mount that onto your USB drive. And then the drive is pretty much ready to go. In that case, you can then do a completely fresh install. So you can wipe your hard drive in its entirety and start fresh with a new install of Windows 11 or conversely, if you want to, if you want to keep all of your settings in place, you can actually run it as a kind of upgrade or in place upgrade on your Windows 10 system. So anyway, let's get on and show you how it's done. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, get a USB drive. I've actually got one here, as you can see. So this one is a 32 gig. This is a SanDisk Ultra USB, USB 3.0. I would suggest if you can do this, a USB 3.0 drive is going to be beneficial because obviously it's going to take less time to write data and also to install Windows, all that kind of stuff. You can use an 8 gig drive that has USB 2 if you wanted to. That is all it needs. 8 gigs is the kind of minimum. There isn't a maximum. Uh, this is going to be absolutely fine. So let's stick that back into our USB port there and there is some stuff on there. So right, that will be erased as we go through the rest of the process. So what I'm gonna do is type in Rufus and hit enter. And you can go to rufus.ie, which is how to create bootable USB drives the easy way, as it says there. And there's options here. So to download the program itself, you've got uh, Rufus. As of today's recording, this is on Rufus uh, 3.18. There is a portable version and also there's other versions available you can get from GitHub or FossHub. So the top one there, Rufus 3.18, is one which is an application. So that's going to install and it's going to stay resident on your machine. If you just want a portable version or an EXE version, click on the one underneath, the portable. So we're going to download that one. You do get all these uh, pop-ups. Don't click on download here because that will download this kind of other nonsense, which is uh, part of how they pay to keep the site going. So just click on the X there and then you'll see the download is started here in this bottom corner. Because it's such a tiny download, it's going to start almost instantaneously. So that now is going to be in our downloads folder. So that's excellent. That's where we want it to be. So the next thing to do is we're going to get the ISO file for Windows 11. So we're going to open up another tab now. And all you need to do into Google, just type in Windows 11 ISO. And you can go to the windows.com site. All of these links will be in the video description. So if you want to follow along, please do use those links. They will be available for you. So go down to the Windows 11 installation. So you've got the installation assistant. We don't want that one at this time. Uh, we've got the option for creating Windows installation media. We don't want that one either at this current time. What we want is this one here down towards the bottom, which is download Windows 11 disk image or an ISO. So on this section, you've got the option for basically Windows 11 multi-edition and that is it. So we're gonna highlight that one and then we'll click on download. At this point now, it's going to give us more download options. So this is more for uh, regional settings. So you can choose from uh, Arabic, Brazilian, etc., etc. Uh, we're going to go with English International, as that is generally UK English. 
and then we'll click on confirm and then it will change the screen and then you basically click on here where it says 64-bit download and that will start the download process that is already downloaded into our downloads folder and as you can see from the bottom of the screen there it is a 5.2 gigabyte file so uh, yeah it could take a little while depending on your internet connection so let that get on do its thing when it's finished we can then get on and actually create our bootable drive Okay, so now we've got both of our files and I've actually moved them to the Windows desktop just to make things a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit easier for you guys to follow along with. So the first thing we want to do is to open up our Rufus program. So we're going to double click on that and we'll get the uh, user account control message come up. So just click on yes. And you've got the option to uh, allow Rufus to check for application updates if you want to. Entirely up to you, whichever you do, I'm going to choose yes, um, even though I'm probably going to delete it pretty much straight after I've done this anyway. So this gives us our main screen, so it shows us our device. So if you've got multiple drives or multiple USBs, then click on this section here. So it has actually selected here, no label D drive, which is our 32 gig drive. So just make sure it says the right one there. The next part is our boot selection. So in here, it's got the disk or ISO image, at which point you wanna click on select over on the right hand side. So click on select and it will open up various options. It should default to your download directory. But if not, just go to wherever your download is stored. So this is on the desktop. So we'll choose desktop. And there we've got our Windows 11 English. So we'll highlight that. And then we'll click on open. Now once we've done that, some magic happens. And in the image option, we've got the option for standard Windows 11 installation with TPM 2.0 and secure boot. Or alternately, you can go down to the extended Windows 11 installation, no TPM and no secure boot. Those are both of the things which are potentially holding you back from installing Windows 11 on your older hardware. So that's the one we're gonna choose, the middle one there. The rest of it, you can leave exactly as is. So depending on what you wanna do, if maybe you've got a, an older drive in your machine, if it's a desktop or whatever, you may wish to actually make it so it's not GPT, depending on the partitioning. Uh, you can choose MBR, so for older systems which have disks formatted with MBR, that might be beneficial to you. So with that, you can do whatever you want here. Uh, the volume label, if you want to, if you're gonna keep hold of the drive for uh, future instances, then you can rename it, call it maybe Windows 11, non-TPM or that sort of thing. But otherwise, that is uh, pretty much it. So all you need to do is press on start when you're ready and it will come up with a warning saying that all your data on the device, D drive 32 gig will be destroyed. To continue with this operation, click okay. To quit, click cancel. So if you're not sure, Click cancel now, but if you're happy to proceed, then click OK. Now this is going to be formatting the drive and mounting the image, as you're probably seeing from the green taskbar at the bottom of the screen there. It'll take a little while to copy the ISO files over to the USB, etc. So do be patient, obviously, depending on the speed of the ports on your PC and obviously the speed of your USB drive. This could take a considerable time or it could be over pretty quickly. But regardless, let it go and do its thing. Ideally, leave the computer as it is. Just let it go and do its thing. Have a cup of tea or something, and we'll come back when that's done. And just as a side note, if you're actually doing this and you're wondering why it's taking so long, you can actually look at the bottom of the screen there, and it tells you the actual files which are being transferred. So if you get to a point where it's in the high percentages, but it seems to have just stopped, it could just be that there's a particularly large file that is transferring. But do keep an eye on that at the bottom, and it'll tell you what's going on. At this point now, it's now actually removing the Windows 11 installation restrictions. So this is something which is actually built into Rufus itself, which is why we use Rufus rather than doing it manually because it automates the process of creating the ISO. Okay, so that is it, it is completed. Um, we should at this point talk about some reasons why you should and why you shouldn't potentially do this. Now, Microsoft have actually said relatively publicly that if people are going to be installing Windows 11 and they do uh, circumvent the security options such as TPM, Secure Boot, etc., etc., then potentially in future there may be a restriction of security updates available. Now, whether or not they're going to be tying the security updates into the whole Secure Boot and TPM and doing it on kind of like a hash key basis, so that the security update looks for a hash key before it can install, I don't know, don't have a crystal ball. Potentially that could be something to do with it. There seems to be obviously a reason why they're pushing for TPM and also Secure Boot in the operating system. Um, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. I guess for companies it does, for Secure Boot, it prevents people booting non-genuine images of Windows, all that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, to kind of you and I, normal people, the end users who are the ones who 
probably feel their millions, we're the ones that kind of effectively lose out. And if you've got slightly older hardware, which still has a lot of legs left in it, but yeah, for some kind of arbitrary reason, we're kicked out of Windows 11, it does seem a bit of a shame. Uh, so yeah, that is essentially it. So at this point now, we could, if we wanted to reboot the machine, go into the BIOS, choose USB as being our boot option, and just boot into Windows as you would normally. Uh, we've done tons of videos on how to install Windows 10 or Windows 11, so if you want to see those, those will be linked in the video description below as well, so you're more than welcome to check those out. Uh, I'm not going to go over it again now, because yeah, we've, uh, we've been over it numerous times, but essentially just reboot the system. If you want to, you can as well. If you go into your computer, and now go into the D drive, we can double click on there, and we can choose Setup and you can go into Microsoft Windows and it will kind of start the setup process. So if you wanted to, you could install from that. So you get the options to start from there. You're more than welcome to do it that way if you want to. That'll do uh, updates and it will also keep your existing system files intact. So Windows 10 stuff, if you've got an existing system, basically this is gonna be a in-place upgrade, but slight difference being is this isn't gonna take into account the TPM thing. Anyway, I've rabbed on for way too long, but hopefully I've supplied you with the information that you need to in order to update your older machines to Windows 11, should you wish to. And to be honest with you, I would suggest doing it. I actually like Windows 11. I think it adds quite a few nice features. And for me personally, it does seem to be an improvement over Windows 10, but please do feel free to let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on that. So that's gonna wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.